Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome to another acrylic painting tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to teach you how to paint this realistic acrylic beach scene. I'm going to teach you how to use tones to create realism in your work, such as realistic skies, how to use blues to create depths and faraway things in the distance, how to blend these colours to create realism in things like the sea and the sand, and how to create realistic highlights just from using these basic tones which should hopefully make you you create this gorgeous realistic beach scene in acrylic paints. So let's get into it! So the colours you're going to need for today's painting tutorial are a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, some green, a little bit of purple, some blue, some brown, some black and some white. And I will go through all the different tones as we go along. Now here I have an 8 by 10 inch canvas and all I've done is I've painted it burnt sienna and I've divided it into three. Now we're going to have some sea and we're going to have a little bit of rocks, we're going to have some land. Forget about the clouds, I'm not going to actually do the clouds. Clouds. I think it will look better without the clouds so we forget about the clouds and we're going to have some sand here now the reason I've divided it into three is because two thirds is going to be the sky and the mountains and one third is going to be the water and the sand and that just it just frames the composition just makes it look a bit better and keeps it in a nice proportion but hopefully with these rocks and this lovely beach we're going to draw the viewers eyes into the middle and we're going to have this gorgeous mountains in the far distance fast forward this section but all I'm doing is just using some blue just to block in where everything should be so all I'm doing is just using some blue just to block in the outline of where I want things like the land and the beach so that's why I've got it fast forwarded but I will slow it down for the rest of the tutorial because I want to go through really slowly how we make all these tones for our work so all I'm doing is I'm just creating an outline just so I know where everything is so now that's done, we, I'm just going to put the speed back to normal and we'll go through the tutorial at normal speed. So I've got royal blue and I've just added three tones of white to it. So I've got royal blue, I've added lots of white and then I've added more white. So I've got three versions, just adding more white as I go along. Now all I'm doing is I'm taking a big brush and I'm going to put the darkest part of the painting, the darkest tone of royal blue in my corners because I want them to be the darkest area because I want to frame my composition. So all I'm doing, we're going to make the sky first and the sky is always darker at the top. So what we want to do is we want to add more white as we go down. Now as I say, I'm very lazy and I have these colours pre-mixed but all you do is just add more white to your blue as you go down. And look, if you can see, I'm just creating X shapes using a really big brush and all I'm doing is blending the tones but we want the darkest part of the sky in the top corners because that's how we're going to frame our work and that's how we're going to draw the eye and we're just going to add more white as we go down towards the horizon really really simple and by using a big brush you can just block in your skies really 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 quickly so all we're going to do same trick is just add more white to the mix so look if we just add more white to that blue so we've got a lighter shade of the same blue look it's just lighter from adding more white and we go right down to the base of our mountains and right down to the horizon and still doing these x shapes what we're doing while the paint is wet i've got hardly any water on my brush just enough to um, create an easy gliding of the surface of the canvas but not too much because i don't want to get it too streaky and watery so i've got plenty of paint and all i'm doing is i'm blending the three tones together with the lightest at the bottom and the darkest at the top and that should create a really nice gradient and color and trick your eyes look at that look really quick to create a realistic sky just using three tones of blue look at that so you see it gets darker as it goes up and it's just very very light at the bottom of the horizon and nice dark corners frames the piece now everyone asks why I paint my canvas burnt sienna. Now this is the reason why. I am pointing out all the little streaks of burnt sienna that I can see through my tones. So that 
light blue because it's a very light pastel tone sometimes it needs a second coat simply for the fact that if you don't apply a second coat you can see through into the canvas behind now if it was a white canvas you probably wouldn't notice till you're finished and then you would go up to your painting and have a nice inspection of it and you would see through to the canvas so what by painting it burnt sienna all I'm doing is because I've got a really bright tone it just shows me where I need to rework it so all I'm doing I'm just doing the exact same trick I've just dried the painting just so I can reapply a second la layer of this blue so all I'm doing I'm doing the exact same technique that we just previously did where I'm just using royal blue at the top I'm getting lighter as I go down and I'm just adding more white to the mix and creating X shapes with my big brush to blend the tones together and all I'm doing as I say is just painting over any gaps that I've missed so there's no of any of the under canvas which is burnt sienna that's shining through so on a closer inspection say this was in a gallery the worst thing you can have is nitpicking of your own work it drives an artist mad I know it drives me mad so by doing this I can just tell that my sky is absolutely perfect because there's no streaks there's no bits of canvas shining through because all I've done is applied a second coat to it so this technique works with any colors so if you think if you were painting a sunset for example and it was a yellow sky or it was a red sky it's the same technique you get lighter as you get towards the horizon so whatever color you start off with at the top you just want to add more white and come down and get lighter as you get towards the horizon and what that does is it gives the um the sky a, a realistic tone and a realistic gradient that fools your eye and it just makes things look further into the distance now when you add things like your mountains because they're bright blue and because the sky is very light in tone what it should do is make them stand out more so all i'm doing i'm just using some cobalt blue which is just a lovely bright blue just to put back in where my mountain was just so i know roughly where it's going to go and what that cobalt blue does look if you can see now it looks like that blue tone of the earth is shining down on the mountain which is a realistic tone for your eyes so let's get cracking with the mountains let's start blocking in our mountains to create a realistic mountain scene so we're going to use blues to create far away depth so all I'm using is a really lovely tone of blue called cobalt blue and all I'm going to do is just block in that area and this is going to be the furthest point of our mountain fading off into the distance now as you can see now because that that sky is really light as it goes towards the mountain the mountain stands out more so it makes your work look more 3d now I've got a Prussian blue which is just black and that cobalt blue so again I'm lazy I pre-mix but all you would do is would add black to your tones so a little bit of black to your cobalt blue still plenty of blue and all you do is just fill in the second part of the mountain and that will look like it's closer again towards the viewer because by adding more black to your tones you're bringing something closer towards the viewer so if you a good rule of thumb is the more blue something is the further back it is the further off into the distance and the more black you add the more you bring it forward towards the viewer so we're just getting a little bit darker as it's getting away from the viewer into this left hand side of the painting so all it is is blue cobalt blue and a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker and don't worry if you have some burnt sienna shining through it's going to actually make it look like terrain <laughs> and look like far off distance so look we're going to just add more of this prussian blue which is just black to the mix so more black to the mix and this far off corner is going to get the least amount of light and it's closest to the viewer because this is sort of where the palm trees and the beach ends in this corner and this part is going to be the closest part to the viewer so that's why it's going to be the darkest and you can just see there just from blocking it in just how much that tricks your eye it's already starting to trick your eyes 
and look much more realistic. So while we've got that really dark tone, I'm just going to block in our rocks. And all I've thought is why not put a few sea rocks onto our beach, just so the waves and the shore just look a bit more interesting because you can have some froth and some waves hitting up against them. But look, you can see the difference between the lighter tone far off into the distance and the darker tone which is nearer to the viewer. And the same with the rocks, we want them nice and close towards the viewer. So we're going to use cobalt blue because it's a great tone to push things far away we're going to just block in our C so all I'm doing is I'm using a flat brush and turning it sideways so it's nice and straight and flat and I'm just using cobalt blue and all I'm doing is I'm just trying to cover up some of that burnt sienna to imply the real deepest part of the ocean so the far off into the ocean we're going to get darker so because we're coming towards the view we're going to get lighter so we're going to add i don't know how you pronounce it cerulean blue to our mix so cerulean blue little bit of black just to desaturize it and some cobalt blue a tiny bit of sap green so a bit of green tiny bit of burnt umber again just to saturate just to pull some of the color out of it and that should give you a nice sort of sea tone so as it gets more shallow the water obviously gets more shallow as it comes towards the beach it's getting lighter in tone so if you just think just like how we did the mountains the deeper the water the darker it's going to be and the more shallow the water the lighter it's going to be and by just like we did the sky by just while it's wet blending the two tones together we can create this lovely gradient just like we did in the sky to trick the eye so it looks like it's getting deeper as it goes out into sea and lighter as it comes towards the shore so it's just the same tricks guys really really easy so all i'm doing we're just trying to cover up some of that burnt sienna and again don't worry if some of the burnt sienna shows up unlike the sky it will actually create the illusion of a beach and it will look like beach sand so don't worry if it comes towards the sky so look all it is is blue cerulean blue and a little bit of cobalt blue a little bit of green just to make it a more greeny tone just to make it more like water and a tiny bit of burnt umber so try to block in and cover up as much burnt sienna as you can so as we come closer to the shore it's going to get really really shallow and you're going to have some of the beach tones shining through the water because the water is so shallow so i'm going to add some yellow okra and some of that cerulean blue and some white to create this really yellowy greeny tone like a turquoise tone so you can use yellow but i'm using a bit of a darker yellow which is yellow okra which is just yellow and a little bit of purple you can make yellow okra and i put in a bit of that cobalt blue just to desaturate it and i'm creating this gorgeous sort of turquoisey color so you can see that and what that is is if you think the water and the sand colors are mixing together as it gets shallow so all you're doing is you're mixing yellow of the sand if you think of it this way and blue of the ocean together so you're creating a really shallow tone so again just while the tones are wet i'm just trying to blend the two tones together but again that should be starting to trick your eye and what that looks like is the water is getting shallower as it comes towards the viewer. Yay! So a really, really easy trick just using these wonderful realistic tones. Because acrylic paintings are really easy to do. They're really forgiving. So we're going to take some yellow and some white and get this kind of Naples yellow. Add a little bit darker brown to it. So just a little bit of brown just to make it look a bit more sandy and a tiny bit of purple. Purple is really good for cooling tones so we're just going to add some purple to that mix. And we should have a nice sort of pastel yellowy colour but not too bright. And that's going to be the part of our sand that is getting the most sunlight. So just like that we're just blocking it in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some warmer brown so we're just going to add a little bit of 
a orangey brown so if you add a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown to that mix just a little bit just to heat it up so if you imagine orange heats things up just like purple cools things down and all we're doing by just using a little bit of that brown a little bit of orange to the mix what it does look if you just it just makes it a little bit darker but a little bit hotter a little bit warmer and that just sort of darkens that left hand corner because that's where we're going to sign it so again what by darkening our corners what it should be doing is tricking your eye and making you focus towards the middle of the composition so already look just from blocking it in it's looking superb we've got this lovely gradient of sky a lovely gradient on our mountain and a lovely gradient as the water gets deeper and gets shallower towards the the um the beach and then we've got this lovely sand effect and we're going to sign it in this corner so let's start adding all the detail so what we're going to do first is we're going to do all the sort of highlights on our mountains to give them a texture so they look like a nice far off lush green mountain off into the distance and we can give it some highlights to create realism so we're going to get some of that fabulous cobalt blue and we're going to add some black to the mix so i've got it pre-mixed but all i've done is just added a little bit of black to the mix so we've just make it a bit desaturated and some sap green now we want it incredibly blue so even though it's a very bluey green we want it more blue than anything else because again it's off into the far distance now all i'm doing is i'm using a fine liner and all I'm doing is where I want to emphasize things I'm pushing down onto the canvas and where I want it to sort of fade away I'm just sort of letting up on my brush and letting the paint run out so I'm pushing down just to create a nice bright highlighted edge and where I want to sort of let it fade off into the distance into the underpainting I'm just easing up on the brush and just letting hardly any paint run onto the canvas now you want to leave lots of the really dark tone that we've got underneath and you just want to kind of fade into it so i'm just scraping into the canvas just very very lightly hardly any pressure because we're trying to create the illusion of shadow and highlights so we're trying to create this gorgeous tone of blue and a little bit of black and lots of green and blue to create this lovely highlight color so blue green and a little bit of black so watch so we're going to create a ridge so we're going to come down but we're going to leave lots of shadow on one side and we're just going to highlight another side so all i'm doing look i'm just creating sort of the illusion of texture by leaving gaps and sort of creating squiggles i'm just trying to think where a mountain would be in connection to where we've created these shapes so where i've created a lump going up into the distance i'm just trying to create the illusion of highlights and sort of gravel and terrain and bits and bobs and because it's that bluey green tone and the earth's sky is blue what it's doing as i say it looks like it's fading off into the distance so leave plenty of that dark tone that dark shadow tone and it should create the illusion of shadow and that lovely cobalt blue at the top looks like the the earth sort of blue sort of um specter sort of coming down onto the mountain so it really really does trick your eye so just try to imagine where you would have sort of crevices and terrains and come down onto that beach surface but remember to leave gaps just to create the illusion of detail now we're going to add more blue and a little bit of black to our mix because this area of our mountain on the left hand side is the closest to the viewer so it's going to be more in the shade and it's going to be darker so all we're doing is we're adding a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of black to our mix and it's still going to be a nice highlight but it's just a bit more cooler and a bit more in the shade but the exact same technique but if you can start to see now how these tones and having the right tones and the underpainting are creating this fabulous illusion of these lovely lush mountains in the background 
and it's not hard i keep telling you it's all about nailing the tones if you nail the tones and then you work on your skills as an artist at drawing and planning your compositions for things like all your scenes you will get so much quicker um so much better quicker because as i say the tones do half the work for you so we've got this lovely sheen of the cobalt blue and we've got this far away one so we're going to get some cobalt blue and we're just going to make a lighter highlight because obviously that's further away so we're going to get some sap green and it's just basically cobalt blue and sap green and we're just going to get load up my fine liner and we're just going to create some highlights on this far off one which should be that you can barely see them but what it does again it just tricks the eye just all this extra detail as i say will just make you a better artist it will make your work look so much more realistic and as i say as you get better and you start improving and with all your compositions and all your drawing skills it will really do you in good stead to make you improve very quickly so already we've got this fantastic shore here and we've got these fantastic mountains so let's start put some detail on our water so we're going to take some of the sky color which was just blue and tons and tons of white it was that bottom color that we've got there so a very very light pastel blue and we're going to start putting in detail on our water now where we've got rocks and we've got the water sort of hitting up against it you're going to create froth and waves so you're going to have bits and bobs of waves and contours in our water so we want to give our water a bit of a 3d aspect and just make it look more interesting and less flat so by using this very pastel blue and a fine liner we're just trying to create where these sort of the water would be splashing up against the rocks so all i'm doing is i'm just trying to imagine where the water would be hitting them and I'm just trying to create sort of froth and sea foam that sort of spirals off when it hits these um, these rocks. And also by just going sort of diagonally across, I'm just trying to create the illusion of waves coming into the shoreline. So this tutorial, as I've said previously, is a little bit harder. It's still very much for beginners and intermediates. It's not too hard and it's not too easy. It's becoming more intermediate. But some beginners will find it okay and keep up and some of you might struggle. But if you don't test yourself and you don't um, try to advance, you never will. It's all in your thinking. So the man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can't are both right. If you think you can't do something before you've even started, you never will. So what I'm trying to show you by making these tutorials a little bit harder each time, not too hard, but a little, just a little step up each time, I want you to try to get comfortable and trying to test yourself and try to get better with each painting. So look, all I'm doing is using this fine liner to sort of edge where I think the sea foam is going to be. And you can create sort of squiggles, that's what I like to do. So I just sort of leave gaps and I sort of tilt it at a diagonal edge. And all I do is sort of create where I presume the wave is sort of going to come up against the surface and sort of peel back and it creates that sort of sea foam. So by just taking your time and using a fine liner, just a thin brush with just some blue and white, you can just easily, just like a pencil, just sort of sketch in where you want things to be. So it's just trying to emphasize all these sort of highlights with some blue and white, just trying to think where foam would sort of be hitting, try to create shapes of waves. Now, as I say, if you have a reference photo ever for what you are painting, you can always go photorealistic and you can always use these same tones that I'm teaching you to do every single bit of sea foam, every single bit of um, wave and highlight and sea froth. And that's the difference between a world class artist and a person who's starting out. All it is is their discipline and their concentration level is so good that they can sit for hours and hours and hours doing their craft simply for the fact they love what they do and they've got a lot of patience and they're just totally relaxed and all they're doing is they're copying it to the best of their ability. So that's all it is. It's just being able 
to sit and not be distracted, not have your phone go in, not have all these outside world things constantly trying to bide for your attention, but instead working on your craft and working on what you want to improve at. Obviously, if you're watching these videos, you want to improve at things like tones, you want to improve at things like realism, and you want to improve at things like seascapes because you have an interest in it. So with me, as I say many, many a times, I love painting the beach. If uh, there wasn't a pandemic at the moment, I would probably be on holiday taking hundreds of reference photos and sketching for my artwork because that is the best way of life, getting to sit by a beach and obviously work at the same time is a dream combination so that's why I like to do it and I like to visit my family out in Spain while I'm doing it. So for me I love the beach and I love how pretty it is and I love the beauty of nature so that's why I enjoy painting it. So whatever you really really enjoy you'll be good at so think of scenes that you really want to work on and go and take photos of it and if you can't take photos of it because obviously all this is going on with the pandemic and stuff or maybe try to find reference photos of it or sketch your own just always be working even if it's one every day just working a little bit towards your dream and soon enough it will all come true and you'll get better at whatever you're trying to concentrate on so look just by taking our time with that fine liner, we're just creating the illusion of froth. So it's all taking off now, it's all get, coming together. So we're going to get some light brown. So we're going to get some brown, lots of white, and a little bit of blue. And we're going to create a lovely bluey brown. So all I've got is a pre mixed brown with lots and lots of white. And I've just added some brown to it. And what I'm going to do is just make it a bluey brown, just again, so it's nice and saturated, just to create highlights on our rocks. So it's just part of the rocks that are getting the sunlight. So it's just again to make it, just like we did with the mountains, just to make it look more 3D, just by putting it in. And again, don't worry if you go over your rocks, we can always darken up the shadow part in a minute with some black and blue. So don't worry if your rocks look a bit flat, they don't stand out just as much. We can just emphasize that now. So we'll get some black and blue. So some blue and lots of black to create this sort of Prussian blue color, which is all it is, is blue and black. And you can just go to one side of your rocks and just create a shadow tone. And if it's too light, like mine, just add more black. Because as I say, the closer towards the viewer, the darker it is. So if you imagine those rocks are closest to us compared to the mountains. So we just want to add more black to the mix just to bring them towards us. And we just want to emphasize that shadow part of the rock. And just sort of the sort of, I don't know, the sort of pebbly sort of sharp bits that you get on some beaches. And that's what the waves are cascading against. So again, just try to think where things would be if you're adding rocks and obviously you've got one side which is a highlight and one side which is the dark shadows. So just like the mountains, just like the sea, all you're just trying to do is just have an emphasis between hots and colds just to create realism, just make your work look a bit more three dimensional. Now while I've got my flat brush, I'm going to make some of the sky colour, which was just blue and white. So I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to it, just to make it a little bit darker. So it was royal blue, and lots and lots of white, and a little bit of cobalt blue, just to make it a bit darker. Sort of a mixture between the two. And while I've got a flat brush, I'm just going to wipe away most of the paint and just have a little bit and I'm just while the canvas is nice and dry I'm just going to try to create the illusion of waves and what that is is the sky tone reflecting on the crests of the wave so just how we've done the really bright highlights these are sort of the waves that are just sort of fading off into the distance and all it is is just the sky tone if you think of it 
just reflecting on the caps of waves. So a good rule of thumb, like I've said in many of my videos, is as you get towards the horizon, so as you get towards the um, mountains, the waves are getting flatter. So you want to almost do completely flat lines. So this flat brush is great for that because all you're doing is just creating a straight line going across. So all it is, just think of it, it's just all the sunlight just hitting those waves and just because it's it's just adding d detail into the far distance and it just tricks your eyes and just makes it look a bit more realistic and as you come towards the shore you just use the exact same tone just to sort of highlight areas and just look like the light shining on top of the water. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some blue and lots and lots and lots of white to create that lovely sky tone that we had. And just so it matches the tone of our horizon, I'm just going to get hardly any paint. I'm just going to sort of glaze this area with my flat brush turned sort of diagonally. I'm just sort of glazing over what we've just painted to try to create sort of the illusion of the wash on the sand. So when the water retracts back, it leaves sort of wet sand. And because it matches the gradient of our sky, what it should look like is look more realistic. Now we're going to take some pure titanium white, so just jet white, and we're just going to emphasize all our highlights now. So where we've got things like the waves, we just want them to be a bit more stand out, not as flat. So now we've got the lovely um, light blue and white. We just want to emphasize certain bits and just create more of a highlight. So we're going to leave some to look like shadow, but we're going to emphasize highlights on certain areas. So all we're doing is just pure white and I'm just sort of tipping the brush diagonally and I'm just sort of creating the illusion of these sort of waves cascading as they hit the shore of our beach and where our rocks are. So it's just sort of the foam as it hits the rocks of the beach and comes up against the shore. So as I say, sometimes with acrylics, you have to go over the top with a brighter tone just to emphasize things because they dry a lot darker and they dry a bit flat. So by just using white towards the end and going over certain areas, it just makes your artwork just look a little bit brighter, look a little bit more um, 3D, and just emphasize all your rocks and all that sort of, sort of splash and sort of um, foam of the waves as it comes up against the rocks and the shore. So that white is really powerful so that's why I always think it's best to do blue and white first and then where you really want to emphasize things you just use the white to really emphasize things so I'm going back to my blue and white so all it is is lots and lots of white and some blue just to create a lighter tone I'm just going to use my finger to smear that just so it looks like it's sort of the shimmer is sort of fading off into the distance I just want sort of where that water is sort of creating a splash and sort of a sort of sheen to the water as it sort of reflects against it. So if you have to go over your rocks in just a darker tone, it's not a problem. As I say, we're not going to go too photorealistic. It's more about tones and more about composition and a nice structure to your beach but you can if you want to you could you could take photos of rocks and create them we're just trying to get a nice composition going but our beach is starting to look pretty damn real already just from these tones so I'm going to take some brown And I'm going to take some dark blue and black. So brown, blue and black. And a tiny bit of that yellow okra. Okra? My pronunciation's shocking, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm just going to sort of put in where I would like some footsteps. So all I'm doing 
just to make the sand look a bit less boring and a little bit less flat I thought why not let's have someone's footsteps that have obviously walked along our beach and off into the distance so all I'm doing is I'm just creating sort of squiggles that sort of fade off again I'm just letting the paint run off my brush so all it was was blue black and brown and obviously there's going to be two feet so I'm just kind of having squiggles that sort of go like that so it looks like someone's walked right through our shot towards the camera if you so to speak there we go some nice footsteps easy peasy So while I've got that same tone, I'm just going to create sort of the darker bits of the wet sand that sort of um, hit the shadows and you've got bits of that dark sand underneath which is really dark simply for the fact it's wet. So I'm going to get some warmer brown, so just by adding a bit of orange. My brown was a bit manky, it sort of, um, I think it went hard, <laughs> so a bit fell off there, simply because it's not been used. So it's just a little bit of um, sort of a burnt sienna colour, so just an orangey brown. And all I'm doing is I'm just tipping the brush sideways, and I'm just trying to create sort of the wet sand that's darkest, and sort of all the bits of beach that sort of wash up onto the shore. So all I'm doing is just tipping the flat brush sideways and just to neaten it up, because obviously that looks a bit scruffy, I'm just taking some blue, some white to create a nice tone, so just like the sky. So what we've got on our sky would obviously be reflecting down onto our water. So what I'm doing is just trying to create sort of like sheen that sort of hits the sand as it comes up onto the bank. So as a wave retracts and the water sort of peels back, it leaves a very light shiny tone to the wet sand, but we want it to match our sky. So you've got to have the same colors. So I'm just using my finger like any professional to wipe it all together. <laughs> but you can use something like a blender brush if you don't want to use your finger. So just that tone that we used for our um, footsteps in the beach and just going around this area just neating everything up. Just want it so it looks like it's fading off into the distance. So just where you have bits onto the beach that sort of create bumps and texture as I said, I don't want to go too photorealistic. I don't want to make the tutorial too hard. So I'm just going to take some white. I'm just going to really emphasize some of the waves coming up now. Because as I say, sometimes you just have to give it two coats simply for the fact that if you're painting white acrylic paint over a tone, the underpainting, just like the burnt sienna, the underpainting of what you've painted is coming through the white so sometimes you just got to let it dry and just do a second layer of white over the top just to really emphasize your highlights so as i say with acrylics they are very easy to use if you know all the tips and tricks so hopefully by these videos you're picking up lots of tricks just maybe doing something twice or just emphasizing something just to make your work look more um, realistic because as I say it's easy when you know how so hopefully you're picking up all these great tips from the videos from these tutorials as I say I've got plenty of tutorials make sure you're liking and subscribing please because the more people who like and subscribe um, as I am fairly new to YouTube and obviously I'm going to do a new tutorial for you guys every week the more we grow hopefully the more I can help other artists with all these tips and tricks because as we grow the algorithm of YouTube will pick up the videos more and show them to other artists so by helping support the channel you're also helping other artists to see these videos so thank you very much all of you who have liked and subscribed so far I really truly appreciate it 
So I'm taking some yellow okra <laughs> and some, um, but as I say, you can make it from yellow, brown, and a little bit of purple and white. Um, if you want, if you haven't got yellow okra, I don't want to leave anyone behind who obviously during today's times can't get to a store or anything like that. So yellow, a little bit of brown, purple, and white, and just add in some blue to that mix, just so we've got a little bit of a greeny yellow. And all I'm going to do is, because this, again, think of what I was saying to you about using blues to put something off into the far distance. By making the yellow a bit greener and just going off into the far distance and just creating a little line when I move my chubby hand in a minute, you'll see. What it's doing is just sort of looking like the beach is curling around and going around with the shore. And again, it's just to trick your eye just to make it look like it's fading off into the distance and that water sort of goes round with it. So that's all I'm doing. And again, I'm just using my finger trick just to sort of blend it into the tone of the blue. So I've signed it in the bottom left hand corner and I'm just going to show you that's why I always darken up my left hand corners. So we've got this fantastic gradient. You've learned how to do realistic skies. You've learned how to use blues and make it darker to bring things towards you and obviously use blues to put things far away. You've learned how to do a gradient of tone in things like your water, how to add the detail over the top, how to darken your corners and just how to create a really realistic highlights. Obviously, again, using saturated tones to create realism, how to add things like froth, how to just go over highlights and just generally create a great composition. So here's the acrylic painting all photographed. The beach scene looks fantastic. We have such a gorgeous scene, all these lovely blues. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Murray and here on M Strip Paintings we have lots of acrylic painting tutorials. On the button now you can subscribe and like. Please do so. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And the next painting tutorial should be coming on the screen now or on the sidebar to your right. Thank you very much. Bye.